All right, guys, so check it out. Today, what's on the agenda is we're going to take apart this car very lightly. We'll take a really shallow dive into trying and observe if there's any differences between the older platform and the newer platform, namely in the knuckle, uh, the front knuckle. See if there's more backspacing on this one. The front upper control arm, which we know the bushings look different. So we'll show you guys that. Uh, the sway bars, so we want to see if the sway bars are different now in thickness and if they're still bonded, if the bushings are still bonded to the sway bar. Uh, we've already mentioned in one of our prior videos, we'll share that over here, that the rear knuckle on the Performance Model 3, the, the new Highland one, has a bearing on both ends for toe and camber, or the, the toe arm and what would be the adjustable camber arm. But on the older platform, that was not the case on... On the toe arm, uh, the knuckle did have a bearing for the camber arm, uh, but the Highland long range and rear wheel drive have bushings in the knuckle. So it's super confusing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna touch upon that. Um, we're gonna show you guys, we'll drop the trays down, kind of inspect. We're, we're also discovering things as we go. But uh, yeah, we're gonna try and test fit this Aspira AF10. This is the 18, 10 and a half and a 35 offset. Um, this wheel did require a spacer on the older platform in order to clear the knuckle. Keep in mind, this vehicle does have two piece rotors now, so it's as if it's already simulated a five millimeter spacer on it, but we'll touch upon that once we test fit this. And we will also attempt to test fit the 20 by 10 warp wheel with the 275 up in the front and see how that fits. So these are a couple of the sway bars from the older Model 3 Performance, the older platform. This is actually the Highland 24 Performance upper control arm but I will show you guys the older platform upper control arm. The bushings look a little bit different, so we'll share that with you in some B-roll. All right, so check it out guys. My battery's busted on my caliper, so we're gonna do this analog, but we're at about 29 mils on this. Maybe it'll be 30, we can look it up, but I'm showing 29 mils on this. That's the front bar from the 2017 to 2023 Model 3 Performance, if they are all in fact the same. In the rear, we've got, uh, let's say it's about, it's 20 mils. So 20 mils in the rear. Now check this out guys. Um, we're gonna show you guys the thickness of the rear bar on the 2024. Look at this. That's 20 mils, right? Let's go to 20. That's 20 mils. It does not fit. Let's loosen this up. Let's go in here. All right. 25 mils. So we know for a fact the rear bar is thicker, but here's the thing. These bushings are like way, way softer. Because on the old bar, you could not twist this. This thing did not move. They were bonded and they were really, 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 really firm bushings. Um, so now let's go to the front and see what happened up front because that's a little puzzling too. So we're in here. This is the measurement for the older platform sway bar. Now check this out. It is loose. That means the new performance sway bar is actually thinner. So we've got about 28 mils, let's call it. So the older platform had a 30 mil front bar and a 20 mil rear bar. This one has a smaller front bar at 28 mils, but a thicker rear bar at 25 mils. Now, why do you think Tesla did that? Do you think it's to compensate for the staggered setup, the staggered wheel and tire setup? It's possible, um, but again, the other thing is that the bushings are much softer now. So look, I can hang on this thing and bounce this bar. Could not do that before. You wanna see that again? All right guys, so check it out. We were about to install this Eibach bar on Tim's 24 Model 3 Performance, but then we realized that the sway bar mount is actually different. So notice this is the older Model 3 Performance, the older platform mount. It actually has a little hump right there. And that hump is also right here in the bushing on both the OEM bar as well as this poly bushing from Eibach. Now take a look at the 24 Model 3 Performance sway bar mount. There is no 
hump over here. So those of you who may want to upgrade your sway bars to the ones that are being used from the older platform, you will need to buy a set of these from Tesla or from us. We'll start, you know, supplying these with, uh, with the sway bar for you guys. But yeah, then you'll be able to, um, you know, get this on there and use the sway bars from the older platform. Now, why? Were we wanting to put the iBox sway bars on this vehicle? Well, when Tim took this thing to Laguna, he was a little loosey-loosey on the back end, so the car was sliding a little bit, and, and it kind of makes sense because we went to a square tire and wheel setup, and with uh, the OEM bars being a lot thicker in the rear and thinner in the front, the car will just have a tendency to want to oversteer more um, with the square setup because we no longer have the staggered 235s and 275. So there's a huge difference between going 265 square and having a 235, 275 setup. So in order to balance the car out a bit, we wanted to go back to, you know, an adjustable iBox sway bar. So this will put us up to a 32 mil um, thickness front sway bar that has three points of adjustment. So we are going to get some older platform uh, sway bar mounts and get this thing bolted on so that he can go to Laguna and see if he can balance his chassis out. And let's move on to the knuckle. All right, guys, so we got the Gemini wheel on there. We have no spacer on this currently, but we do have two piece rotors. So it's as if you've got a five millimeter spacer on your factory performance rotor. Now check this out. This clearance is super, super close. If you did not have a two piece rotor or a five mil spacer on there, I do not believe it will clear. So this leads me to believe that this knuckle backspacing wise really isn't different than the other one. There are some other differences to the knuckle to make, um, you know, accommodations for like uh, uh, some other sensors that might be in it uh, for the system. But the actual shape and dimension of the upright, I believe is the same as before because uh, based on what I'm seeing here, nothing seems to be different. Now we're going to test fit uh, our 18, 10 and a half and see how that goes. Okay, so check this out. As you can see, the knuckle itself, the upright, is curved. So your smaller diameter wheel will lose backspacing versus your larger diameter wheel until it gets to a certain point where you'll start losing backspacing as you go to a larger di diameter as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys exactly what's going on. We're gonna put this 18 on there. Now I actually already know that it probably won't clear based on what I saw with the Gemini. So I've got just some leftover uh, three mil spacers. I'm gonna stack two of them together. This is six millimeters, plus about the four to five millimeters we're getting here. So let's just say we're almost at a 10 millimeter spacer. All right, I'm gonna grab this beautiful AF10, 18, 10 and a half plus 35. And put this on there, push this all the way in and you can actually hear it touching. And this did require about, I think, a 15 mil spacer on my Model 3. Um, so, yeah, that seems the same. With that said, I'm already confident the warp wheel will not work. But let's just see. It's a 20. Maybe it will with this uh, stack of spacers, so almost 10 mils of spacers. Again, that means it probably will not work. Uh, because finding a 10 mil spacer on stock studs is going to be very, very difficult. Did you hear that? 
Let's find out what that is. It sounds like it's hitting the zip tie, but I'm not sure. Either way, must be real close. I'm going under the car to get a deeper look. Yeah, that's not gonna work. All right, guys. So there you have it. Myth busted, we already know now, the 20 by 10 plus 45 warp wheel with the factory 275s will not work on the front without a big freaking spacer. So uh, I don't think that this upright is any different than the prior platform in terms of backspacing or wheel fitments. This is the older bushing. This is the older Model 3 and Model Y bushing. And this is the Performance Model 3, the insane 2024 edition. So you can already see that there's a big difference there. Now check this out. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna be on all the bushings on the car, but this thing, look at that deflection, okay? Vice is holding it nice and strong. And this one, it's so rigid, the bushing, that it's actually moving the arm. The vice isn't hold, able to hold it. So this is like way, way softer. See this? This is like way softer. And this one can't even. Soft, not soft. So there's a difference in the bushings on the up control arms. Other than that, they look pretty similar. I mean, there is a difference here, I guess, in the ball joint. And it looks like they've done something here. Looks sealed versus this one that always had the problems. And then the TSB was to put a bunch of gunk on there to seal it. It never really worked, but there's your Fuca's. I don't give a Fuca. There you go. Uh, so now we're gonna go pop the rear wheel off. We're going to show you guys what's going on with the toe arms back there. But we already changed the camera arm, so we can't really show you that, but I'll pull it from the box. So let's go. All right, so check it out, guys. So right here in the knuckle, you see that bearing? This is the toe arm. This was not a bearing on the older platform, and I do not believe it is a bearing on the long range Highland or rear wheel drive or any other trim of Highland. I believe these are rubber bushings. Um, this, however, was a bearing on the older platform, and they kept that on the Highland performance. But on the other trims of Highland, long range, rear wheel drive, whatever, that's actually rubber bushing now. All right, guys, so another difference. We notice the factory torm has a captive nut, which it did not have on the prior platform, the prior generation Model 3 and Model Y probably, but now it does. So if you go to an aftermarket tow arm, like what we're doing here, the Mountain Pass Performance tow arm, as you can see, there is no captive nut. So we have stocked up on the factory nut from Tesla, and we'll supply this with your tow arm so that you can bolt this on once you remove the factory torm. So that's another difference. We've basically shown you um, the front up control arm. We've shown you that the bushings are different between the older platform and the newer platform. We have shown you guys that the sway bars differ in thicknesses as well as the bushings. They're still bonded, but they're definitely a different durometer. Uh, what else have we shown you? We showed you that the knuckle appears to be the the same as before in terms of backspacing. I was really hoping that there would be additional backspacing so we could run even wider fitments without doing any other weird clearancing stuff, but that wasn't the case. That's about it. Yep, showed you the rear knuckle, showed you the front. We showed you guys three different wheels to go on there, 20 inch warps, 20 by 10s. It will not work in the front without a spacer. And uh, that's about it guys. So thanks for watching. We hope this was informative. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share, hit that notifications bell so that you guys are informed of all of our new videos to be released. We have a ton more Highland content coming out. And don't forget to check out our Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash ZevCentric. It's $5 a month, it's super cheap. It's just an easy way to support us and all that we do. And again, we appreciate you guys. Check out the links in the description below for anything related to the Highland or our website or whatever we got. But we thank you and we love you. We'll see you on the next one.